have you noticed that this flu is different? I'm not a doctor, but I think I've been a good patient through my hospital experience, and I'd like to share some tips with you. You may have seen this information on the internet, and it does seem to change daily. First and foremost, I'd like to focus on the glass half full. 90% of those who will get COVID-19 will not need hospitalization. But I don't need to repeat, we all need to still stay at home right now. You can see how unchecked spread has overwhelmed the medical systems in Italy, Spain, and New York. Here's some tips for those with flu at home. Whether you have COVID-19 or not COVID-19, the recommendations are the same. Fluid, rest, humidity. The fluid of choice seems to be chicken soup. I don't know if that's a real thing or is just a good comfort food. I know the Chinese one seems to be plain congee. Anyway, for humidity, try a steaming pot and a towel tented over to your face. Some suggest just going to the bathroom, run the shower for a while, and sit up, sit in the steamed room. The virus thrives in dry air and dislikes moisture. It seems this is a 14-day flu, so don't get discouraged. I'm a distance rider, and I can easily do 100 kilometers in a day. In 14 days, I could ride from Ottawa to Halifax. Obviously, if I'm sick in bed, the scenery won't be as nice. But the fortitude of getting up, doing the same things to get you to the end goal applies. If you consult a medical professional, probably prefer, preferably over the phone or online, they may turn you away. Don't worry, that's a good thing. Hospitals can only handle those with serious breathing problems. Being turned away now means you have an excellent prognosis at home. Much better than the half of those who are admitted and are actually going to need ventilators in the end. For those self-medicating at home, start with managing systems symptoms like using throat lozenges. Monitor your fever. Fever is actually very good. It's your autoimmune system kicking in and trying to fight the virus invasion. Once your temperature gets above 102, 103 Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius, you'll want to take something to bring your temperature down to prevent organ damage. Tylenol, acetaminophen, is the preferred medication for this. If you end up at the hospital, don't be discouraged if you have to wait for a ventilator. You'll be getting oxygen already, and it likely means you aren't really sick enough to need a ventilator. My father had a ventilator to put in his, him during his final days. The machine breathes for you. They will sedate you so you don't fight the machine. But on that ventilator, during those lucid moments when you're in high alert, consider that 64% of ventilator patients are going to recover completely. But 14 days is a long time. There are going to be moments of doubt. In hospitalization, hospital isolation, you're only going to see people, um, doctors and nurses, in their personal protective equipment. You're going to need to draw on some inner strength. I think this is easier for those with some sort of spiritual upbringing, um, but have the confidence you're going to get better. Use that inner strength to release inner tensions. Maybe non-Christians think, huh, pray for a miracle. Um, it doesn't really work like that. Others will be praying for me, and it's that intent and virtual support that I'll bathe in. I will actually be praying for the world and for healing of all those around me in isolation. I would make not take any comfort in maybe going to heaven, but I'll be reaching for the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit within me and still firmly grounded in this world. Also, never doubt that you are getting the best medical attention and advice. This is actually your final plank of faith. If you doubt this, then you are starting into a black hole of despair. I work in manufacturing. I consider that we are currently have a 90% yield with COVID-19, with 2% dying. In manufacturing, we are always trying to improve our yield. I'm hoping some things I've said here will help just 1% to 
of the people recover from COVID-19. I also have a message to those who feel fine and safe and invincible. 2% is one person in 50. May I ask you which of your 50 friends, family and associates you would like to die in the next six months? My wife passed away at the age of 54 from cancer. So many of the people at the funeral said, it seems all the best ones die first. Death, while inevitable, does not discriminate.